Welcome to another live episode of Orient Today. I'm Joe Johnson, joined again by Kim Urbanowski. Welcome back, Kim. Hi, thank you for having me again. <sighs> Labor Day weekend has come and gone. Uh, yeah. Fall is just a couple days away, isn't it? It felt like it today, fully, <sighs> this morning. Summer is over. You happy about that? I, or mm, so I don't dislike summer, <laughs> but you know, when it gets really hot, I'm, yeah. I could take it or leave it, but you know, the, the weather this morning, really crisp and kind of like just cool like that. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Fall has always been my favorite season. And I, mm -hmm. I do love summer, but like you said, it's been really, really hot. So I'm kind of it enjoying has. the little bit of a cool down. But apparently we're going to get back into the 80s, almost 90 uh, yeah. next week, I think. Yeah, so I think it's going to. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's in and out, right? So yeah. uh, it's that time of the year. And the football season kicked off this past weekend. Uh, Lions put up a lot of points, but lost. Uh, same old Lions? I don't know. <laughs> they always put up a lot of points, but uh, lose games. Yeah, they have the best fans, too, I think, though. I mean, the most loyal fans. I, 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 I don't know. I don't My know how loyalty it... loyalty only goes so far. <laughs> uh, how'd your fantasy football team do this weekend? Uh, great. <laughs> they did really, really well. Who's your studs? Uh, <laughs> Lions? Here. I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, I got a win uh, against our director, Joey. We're in the same league. Uh, uh -huh. Coincidentally, him and I were in the championship last season, and I beat him in the championship game. And then in week one... I beat him in week one, so I'm surprised he hasn't blurred my face out or <laughs> cut away from me or something. But uh, apparently, technical I'm difficulties his in Joe's done. He's done. <laughs> Is my mic working? Um, so yeah, I, I'm big into fantasy football, and that gives Joey and I something to mm -hmm. talk about here at work, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So we get obsessed with it. Uh, busy weekend. There was a lot going on this past weekend. Right. Uh, the Dragons traveled to Oxford on Friday. We'll have some highlights for you a little bit later, but that's a big cross-town right. rivalry and a lot of emotion, obviously, oh, yeah. uh, going back to Oxford for that game. Yeah. And uh, Sunday was the uh, 21st anniversary of 9-11. Um, yeah. And so there uh, was a, another ceremony at uh, Veterans Memorial uh, Park on Lapeer yeah. Road. And, uh, you know, it's so nice that Lake Orion has that complex, that facility to have these types of ceremonies. Yeah. Um, it's just a, a, a beautiful memorial uh, that I have watched evolve over close to 30 years. Mm. I remember shooting video of the check presentation when they purchased the land and uh, every new development that had uh, taken place over the, the next 30 years uh, from groundbreakings to the addition of various things. and. Um, and yeah. That have been gone up, that have gone up. So uh, during the ceremony, they had uh, the police chief, uh, the village uh, police chief, and the uh, fire chief share their stories about where they were uh, 21 Lieutenant years ago on 9/11. Uh, I did not know the the police chief uh, had visited the twin towers the year before. Uh, with his family. So imagine having just been at the Twin Towers and then uh, watching it all on full TV, on TV a year later, so. I talked to him a little bit after that because I thought that was a, um, quite a wild story about, yeah. you know, how he was just there and his feelings about, concerned about the people that he had just met and yeah, those exactly. people. So I think they all did a good, all three speakers did a really good job of bringing it a little bit, uh, making it personal. Yeah. And then uh, they always uh, hang that giant flag over M24, and as people go by, they honk yeah. their horns. Um, and uh, that was, uh, I believe that was donated by the Flood family. Yep, yep, Trustee Flood and, and his uh, family. Yeah, so that's always something to see when that giant flag is hanging over M24. It's impressive. So, yeah, yeah. we're really um, lucky as a community to have that that. Uh, piece of property that uh, we're able to do Memorial Day and yeah. uh, those types of events there and coffee with a veteran and all yes. that sort of stuff. So, so big anniversary on Sunday. And then um, we also, on Saturday, uh, a big event returned 
uh, to Lake Orion. Last year was the first year. That was the DDA's Oktoberfest. Right. Did you make it out to Oktoberfest? I didn't get to Oktoberfest. I no. did not, no. I remember last year not knowing what to expect because it was a brand new event and I arrived with my video camera to uh, to cover it yeah. and was shocked by the turnout. It yeah. had an enormous turnout um, and it was fantastic and I'm like, I think you guys are onto something here. Yeah, how many years have they been doing this? Well, it's last year was the first year. That's a, right. So this was the second year right. uh, and the turnout was tremendous again. So Great, good for um, them. So I, I was there on Saturday, and I uh, quickly put together uh, these uh, highlights from Oktoberfest. Uh, enjoy. On Saturday, September 10th, Lake Orion residents were encouraged to don their lederhosen and come out to DDA's second annual Oktoberfest. The parking lot near Children's Park was closed off as visitors arrived to enjoy food, games, music, and lots and lots of beer. In just two short years, Oktoberfest has become the DDA's largest fundraiser of the year, and not only does the DDA benefit, but other local nonprofit organizations benefit as well. The American Legion has been bartending for us all day. They have, they have taken care of our needs in the bar, and the tips are going to the American Legion. Um, we had the Art Center came and they served for us um, during the dinner and um, the Lions Club they set up our perimeter for us you, there's you know you have to follow the rules and be very careful and the Lions Club knows how to do it so we have them set up a perimeter and they're coming in tonight and they're doing a 50-50 raffle okay. and they benefit from the 50-50? Absolutely they benefit yes and all their charities that they the many 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 charities that the Lions Club um, support, say, I'll benefit. One of the more popular events was a stein holding contest where women and men competed for medals and prizes. Two minutes and 59 seconds. Oh, she's going. And we have the winner. Stay here, stay here. Uh, did you hear? The fundraiser allows the DDA to plan projects and host other events throughout the year. Director Molly Lalone told us about a major project that's currently in the works. This is the DDA's main fundraiser, and this main fundraiser helps us pay for the events for the rest of the year, and, um, and that allows us to use our other funds to do very, very big projects. And this is brand new. We have a huge project that we are about to do. We are trying to purchase the Lake Orion Lumber Yard. Along the Paint Creek Trail, we're going to add some more park space. We're going to add a lot more parking, public parking for the downtown. And we're hoping to be able to um, add some buildings that would extend our downtown right onto M24, just visually. So big project, big project. And that's why these kind of fundraisers are important, because the events are important for our businesses and for our customers. It's exciting. Um, but we want to be able to use our funds very wisely. So yeah, Oktoberfest was a lot of fun. It ran all day Saturday. The rain threatened throughout the day, but it never did get really bad. And it didn't seem to affect attendance. I don't um, think rain usually does. I think we're pretty, <laughs> we're pretty substantial people. We don't like rain to get in our way. Yeah, exactly. And you saw a little bit of footage of the Stein holding contest. It, that was hilarious. <laughs> they had the women do it first, then the men. And watching the strain on everyone's <laughs> face, just trying to hold their arms right. out straight was hysterical. It's hard. I mean, you know, they did that in, in what is that, Survivor or whatever. They had things like that, and you think, oh, it can't be that hard. Even if yeah. you're not holding anything, just doing like this or something for a long amount of time. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Now, I don't know yeah. if you heard the part of uh, Molly's interview there. I was kind of taken by surprise. Um, she was talking about upcoming projects and stuff that the DDA is uh, involved in. 
and she talked about their bid to purchase the Lake Orion Lumber Yard and develop that with some new store frontage and things like that. So, uh, do you know anything about that? And uh, I do not. You no, know, it's I don't. it's. I tell you one thing. Over the next couple of years, the landscape of Lake Orion is going to change that drastically with all the developments and everything yeah, that are going to be taking place. So. Boathouse restaurant and the yeah. All the other properties coming up. Yeah, there's a lot happening. Yeah. In the village on. and the township. So, you know. Yeah. It's coming. So, all right. Well, we have some guests here. You uh, want to tell us about our guests? We do. And I am so excited to announce there's, you know, there's a big thing happening this weekend. Like the biggest thing in, in Orion, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, it's Elo Palooza. And I would like to introduce um, Maggie and Danielle, who are here from the Daisy Project. Um, who uh, is responsible for Elo Palooza, among a lot of other things in the township? I wore my Daisy shirt for y'all today. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> those are colorful. I got to get one I of those. Yes, this is yeah. the current year t shirt yes. sneak preview of. They uh, are for sale. They are for Saturday. sale. There you go. Halfway that's to. The that's the theme, right? St. So Patrick's halfway Day. Halfway to St. Yes, Patrick's so Day. Yes. <laughs> the little uh, shamrock. <laughs> shamrock down here. So, how and long have we been doing this? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. <laughs> yes, this is our eighth year. Wow. Wow. So what can people expect this Saturday? More fun. <laughs> Lots of music. Sunshine. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, <laughs> as some of us like to say, 100% of daisies, I think. Is yes. Yes. Someone coined that. Um, <laughs> food. Beer tents. Um, vendors. Vendors. Uh, yeah. Lots of, like, um, Food vendors, um, craft vendors, mm -hmm. lots of people. A lot of fun things for families. So this is a family event. Bring everyone. Bring your kids. Bring your grandparents. Bring everyone in between. I mean, the yes. music is obviously, you know, the big draw. Yes. Um, and you all do a really good job of, of putting together fun slate of music. Which, right. You know, um, but there's, you know, a lot more fun to, to be had there. So, yes. And kids 12 and under are free. Just so we're <laughs> aware, and there yes. are kids' activities there. There's kids' activities, yep, like the, the face pen painter who always comes. She does a like, really great job. Yes. Um, there's goofy faces, um, so people can get their characters done. Um, Henna, Starshine, Starshine Arts, cool. um, do Henna. There's, um, what other activities do we have? I know we're bringing um, for food for kids. No. <laughs> oh, the, the photo booth. That's brand oh, new that's this right. year. So oh, um, Moxie, a company called Moxie is coming that's and they're right. having a photo booth so everybody can, um, you know, do their do their fun pictures. And, and they get printed on site. And they get printed on okay. site and um, we get to keep one, you get to keep one kind oh, of thing. Oh, so you have so. to kind of be careful what you do when you're in there because there's going to be <laughs> evidence left over, right? So <laughs> like if you're going to go in there and make crazy mind. faces, you better right. be sure that you're okay with that being I, right. I believe it's open air, but I do think that they have a curtain that, okay. that covers you. So. Right, so. so you can have some fun. And then, like Maggie mentioned, we have um, food vendors coming, so you don't have to leave for food. <laughs> we bring, that'll be theirs. We have Sick Pizza coming. They're going to be serving their uh, Detroit-style pizzas, uh, Mama's Taqueria, um, Jolly Dragon, Dessert, um, Walt's Diggity Dogs, um, oh. if you ever had his. Um, dogs are amazing. And then um, we have a cotton candy. Um, it's Lolo and Buttons Cotton Candy, and it's it's a really cool thing because they make all their own cotton candy flavors, so they have something like 27 or 30 different flavors of cotton candy. You order it as you want it, so mm -hmm. it's it's going to be... They make the big flowers. <laughs> they make lots of cool stuff. Uh. <laughs> so, so we're, yeah, so we got um, some very different food vendors this year, too, so I think that'll be a lot of fun. Um, for, so for everybody. Things are at uh, kicking off at Wildwood Amphitheater off of Joslin Road. What time does the first concert take uh, get underway? Um, gates open at 1130. Um, things officially kick off around noon, mm -hmm. give or take. You know, mm -hmm. you never know. There could be some technical difficulty. <laughs> um, <laughs> Who's kicking things off? Who's performing? Do you know off the top of your head? Um, do you want to read my shirt? Sure. Danielle? <laughs> <laughs> actually in the back of this shirt. So um, we have D-Man All-Stars, Aaron Zindel, Faye Burns and the Embers, 2XL Band, One Ton Trolley, uh, Levi Bouquet and the Straight Legs, uh, Melophobics, and then our two headliners are the Gasoline Gypsies and Stone Clover. 
for her. Which uh, being yes. halfway to St. Patty's Day, yes. Stone Clover um, is an Irish rock band, so it'll oh. be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll so, be cool. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun too. So these bands, do they donate their time to perform? Uh, how does that work? How do you how do you line up these bands? So Shannon um, is another Daisy um, project member, and she is our music guru, <laughs> as I like mm -hmm. to call her. So she gets in touch with various bands, um, and you know, I'd say all of them are local. I believe this year. Yes. Um, so yeah, she gets in touch and, and inquires whether they'd like to uh, participate in our event this year. And um, you know, a lot of those bands I listed off have been coming for many, many yes. years That's and awesome. continue to be generous with their time and um, coming to support the event. So. Okay. And then the, the money that's raised from this event, what does that allow the DAISY Project to do? All kinds of things. Um, but mostly we are just trying to make all the communities around us, not just, you know, like exactly where we live, but like all the communities kind of branch out to be inclusive for everybody that lives in and around, um, whether that is... Um, a, a beach mat, like we've done beach mats the Moby mat, at yeah. the Moby Mats um, for Groveland Parks, um, for an MDA camp, um, for instance. We, you know, the um, the playgrounds, the um, wheelchair, uh, what do you call those? Picnic tables, mm -hmm. adult changing tables. Um, the, Miracle the, League. The, the Miracle League. Um, we were, yeah. you know, very heavily um, involved yes, in were. that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah and the let them play over at friendship park that was like our very first goal right <laughs> that was our first thing that's what kind of that was that's what spurred everything was just a wheelchair swing um you know i remember when uh, that playground you know they had a big uh, ribbon cutting and everything yes. for that playground and i remember there were some people that were involved that were they said were a little disappointed and they and uh supervisor chris barnett was like why are you guys disappointed and they said where are the kids with special needs supposed to play? And Chris Barnett mm -hmm. was like, I did not think of that. And it was a big awakening. It yeah. was a big epiphany. And since then, they've added those inclusive uh, playground equipment and stuff like that. And now that seems to be more and more common. Yeah, people are taking note and they yeah. are going on their, their own initiatives and they are doing those types of things in their communities, which is so amazing. I mean, if that's all, if that's all we could do was like, like put a spark out there for other people to do it, hallelujah! That's great. Right. Well, that is so great. You you kind of set the tone and and provided a model for how, you know, citizens and people who live in their communities can connect with the people who can help make things happen, um, in terms of you know businesses and volunteers and and you know local officials and stuff. I mean. Really, if you want to look at how to get things done, we should really look at the bunch of you. I mean, there's you guys are a force to be reckoned with. I mean, I would really, I would really um, worry about anyone that tried to tell you no. To be honest, because you you've been, you know, you've you, you've, you've always you have solutions to to problems that a lot of people didn't even know existed. We're so. adamant. I mean, and we also live the life. So yep. you know, I have a daughter. Um, Christy does, and um, Maureen, who Maureen. we're all on the board. We all have children that are severely affected. Yeah. Um, so we know kind of what we're missing, what could be better, right. um, what could be helpful, not just for us, but for other people, you know, in the community too. Um, and we've been told no so many times. It doesn't matter. You just you find a different way different. around it, and yeah. it's fine. You find somebody else who will say yes. Yeah. Um, and that's that's pretty much what got us. Yeah, this I've far. always kind of admired the, the tenacity <laughs> yeah. that you all have. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah, I remember when the uh, the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act, was passed. What was that? Late eighties, I, I think. think so. And um, it, it's shocking to think that that recently that there had to be laws passed to force businesses and people to make their, Isn't that crazy? their businesses mm -hmm. more accessible. Like that wasn't a thing until. The late 80s and now it's almost shocking if you visit a business and you, there's it's not accessible like that's it, it the is, norm now but they will tell you um well we're grandfathered in mm. Mm. the building is x amount of years old so we're grandfathered in we can't make you know those those changes so on mm. and so forth and 
I mean, I guess I can kind of see their point too from like a business standpoint, like it's just gonna cost like an astronomical amount of money to do that. Mm. Um, but that's where I think the government should come in, like in that, in that community to be like, you know what, we need to make, we're gonna help you yeah, offer a grant or you assistance know, or something to help you make your store ADA compliant. I yeah. mean, that would be that would be great. I mean, most of these are small businesses and they don't sure. necessarily have the funds. So I feel them on that level. Mm. Um, but I mean, those are places that we don't go, and not because I don't like your stuff, but because I physically can't get in your store. <laughs> right. So, right. yeah, and talk more about Miracle Field. You know, it's it's. When I'm there shooting video, whether it's, you know, opening day for the season or whatever, it's it's hard not to get emotional. It's amazing. Because you're seeing it, these kids it is having truly so much fun. It is truly amazing. Like, you just talk about it and, like, your eyes all light up and you get a little teary because you're like, oh, my gosh. Um, and, again, I think I see it from my perspective where, like, my daughter's looked over a lot. Mm. Like, a lot. You know, she's... I don't, I don't know. People just look over her a lot. And um, when she's there at Miracle League, she is like a shining star. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Everybody sees her. Everybody acknowledges her. And that alone makes my heart, like, grow 15 right. sizes. It's purely, it, it's just joy. And you see it with all the other kids that are there, too. Um, and the people who are there volunteering are just spectacular. Um, all the parents are just, you know, wonderful. It's just, it's a really great place to be, and you cannot be in a bad mood and be there. It's just, it, it's no, impossible. It's, it's true. true. It is it's, impossible. You can't. <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's nothing. I had, I had spoken to when when we did the concession stand ribbon cutting, which was a wonderful day too. There was a young lady who was um, there. She was volunteering. She was selling raffle tickets. I don't remember her name, um, but I know that she was in a chair. And we were talking about something. And she said, "I'm graduating soon." And I said, oh, "Where are you going to school?" She said, "Yeah, I'm going to school." I said, "What are you studying?" She says, "Well, I want to um, like work for an organization that that uh, you know ADA compliance kind of thing." She says, "I think she wanted to be an attorney." Mm -hmm. You know, working nice. towards that, and I was like, "Okay, well, I'll buy your Apple tickets then." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it was great. It was it was great to watch someone who's affected by it also being like, "Okay, well, I'm gonna, you know, take the bull by the mm -hmm. horns too." But you know, she here she is surrounded by a bunch of people who are supporting her in that endeavor, and mm -hmm. get it, girl. That's I just, amazing. You know, yeah, I love no, that. yeah, I love I that. Wish, I think her name was Erica, but I don't remember. <laughs> Yeah, Chris Barnett is you know doing the announcing, and he h seems to have a blast with that. And all the players <laughs> yeah. uh, have their <laughs> intro music. And yeah, everything. yes, and it's it's so fun. It's 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 hard not to just laugh and smile because I love when like a, a player comes up to bat, and they hit like a bloop single, and <laughs> they don't stop at first. They oh, turn no. first. <laughs> they go yeah. past second. Yes, and then everyone's like, it's a home run, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. okay, it's yeah, great. I guess it's a home run. It and is it's great. So much fun. There and are, they're celebrating yeah. and they're greeted when they cross home plate. It's just amazing. There are um, a few players who do that every single time, <laughs> and you just know that they're going to do it. it, and it is just so great. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, you're just like, oh, here it comes, home run. Just, Let's go. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Daisy oh. Project played a, a big role in that. What, what's going through your head now to to be on the other end of it and and see that and and all this accessibility now in this community? It's so great. It is so great. Like opening day of that field was, I believe, August 9th of 2019. Mm -hmm. And I just remember just crying the whole day. <laughs> the whole day because it was, I mean, we had thought about this type of a field for years. Yeah. And we were told, no, 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 no. Um, but then, you know, Chris Barnett, you know, he was like, okay. <laughs> you know, most people know, like, the whole story of, you know, how it all, you know, came to fruition. But yeah. I mean, talk about your grassroots. I mean, there was yes. fundraising going on all over Everywhere. The like, the community was just all on board, you know, like, in that field, you know, with the camper and the yes. and all, all the things, you know. Mm -hmm. People just came and were just donating money, and then it kind of halted a little bit. Um, and then, you know, Easter Seal swooped in and saved the day and um, mm. it just, oh gosh. 
<laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's just yeah. so, so great. And not just for me and my family, but for like all the families that, that come out. Because, I mean, like I was saying, a lot of our kids just kind of get looked over and they're like not able to play on a regular team. Right. Whether that is because of the field itself, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, you know the, the dirt, whatever, the rocks. Yeah. Um, this field is just that crushed foam rubber um, that's perfect. Anybody yeah. can walk on it, can roll on it, you can fall on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> um, it's not so bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It's, it's not so bad. bad. Cushy. <laughs> so we have the field, we have playground equipment. Your work is done, right? Is no. there anything else that needs to be done here <laughs> in the community? That's there's, what I was going to say. There's <laughs> so much more. I mean, not just in like Lake Orion, but, you know, the outskirts of Lake Orion, you know, into Macomb County. Um, we're in Macomb County. Um, there's three of us on the board that are in Macomb County. Um, we've been trickling into there. There's um, a park uh, called River Bends. It's on 22 Mile and Ryan. Well, there's a few different entrances to it, but um, Kiwanis and the Lions International and the Lions Club um, kind of joined forces and they opened a park called Kids at Play. And um, it has a lot of different accessibility, accessible type toys, but it's all inclusive. So everyone can play together, Perfect. whether you are able-bodied or not, which I love. Um, so we would like to have a few more things there, um, but we're not just, just thinking about that park, you know? Um, maybe other mats, you know, Moby mats at other parks so people can, you know, get down to the water's edge, um, different type of changing tables for other locations that don't have them. Yeah. Um, I mean, lots of people don't think about that, um, you know, but when you have like an adult sized child, um, you can't just put them on the koala, ba ba koala baby no. kind of thing and you know yeah. do that kind of a thing or um, sit out in the grass because that's what we're, you normally do is just right. sit out in the grass. Um, but it's not just for our kids. There are uh, um, disabled adults too who are in chairs and they sure. would, they need privacy to take sure. care of things that most of us would just take for granted in a regular public right. restroom. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Elo Palooza, that's your largest fundraiser of the year. That yes. Help you achieve your goals. So, yes. this uh, this Saturday, kicking off at, yes. you said gates open at 11.30, concert yes. starts around noon. Right around noon. noon. Yeah. And yeah. runs how okay, long? Like, mm, Till 11. 11 o'clock. Yeah. Yes. So, 11 hours of music. Full day of yeah. entertainment and food and games and Full day. fun. Yeah. Is there a cornhole this year? Yes. Yeah, I don't think we yeah. mentioned yeah. cornhole. Yes, yeah, we didn't. yes. Yeah. Motor City Cornhole is yeah. coming back. Um, if you go to, um, you can register online. Yep. Um, there are openings. Yes. So, um, how do you get there? Through our I believe um, on lopalooza.org there is a link to Motor, Motor City. Okay, Cornhole. so yep, you just go there, you click the link and sign up. Um, that's always fun. You get free um, tickets if you signed up to do play Cornhole. Cornhole. Yep, you get free, you get free tickets to cool. you yep. know to stay at yeah. Lopalooza. That's great. Um, and the swag this year, the swag. Oh, the swag. We brought this is really one good. of our Scylla pints they're, and they are silicone. I so, love those they, so much. if you drop them, yes. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, this is, um, if you couldn't tell, we kind of went with more of like an 80s theme yes. this year. So, this yeah, matches all of our themes. And these we only have limited quantities of. So, you got to get there early. We sold out by, I think, 4.30 last year of those. I was mm. selling, so I work in the concession yes. stand because it's my favorite thing ever. Come visit me in the concession stand and get bigger tickets if you need to, and swag. Yes. But yeah, those always go really fast. Yep, so right. we'll have those. We have the t-shirts. What are we selling those for? I believe they're $12. $12, and they come with And they come a with a drink ticket in yeah. them. So um, $12 with a drink ticket. Like I said, these are usually pretty hot commodities. Well, of course, we have the t-shirts um, this year as well. Um, they're not specific per year or for the year. We are doing some general... Um, Allo Palooza Daisy Project sweatshirts because mm -hmm. although it's supposed to be quite lovely when the sun goes down, it does get a little chilly. So yeah, yeah. we're uh, going to have some sweatshirts this year as well. So lots of swag and 
and lots of fun. Right. <laughs> I'm so happy. Big I know. I can't wait to see you there. It's <laughs> always, uh, it's always nice to have Kim. It's uh, hanging honestly out. my favorite thing ever. You guys right. do such a good job. <laughs> yeah. It's Thank a you. lot of work. If nothing else, come down and, and watch, you know, the show because they put so much into it, and it's just this is the best yeah. thing. I love it. Yeah. I'll be there with my video camera awesome. at least for a little we'll look while, to it. and uh, we will see you on Saturday. Thanks awesome. for coming out. Well, thank you. Yes, for having thanks. Us. Thanks so much for having yeah. us. Awesome. All right. All right. Um, we're going to take you now to uh, what was the last regular uh, LO Live concert mm -hmm. in the Gazebo and Children's Park in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, Matt Hires. Here's a little clip from his performance uh, last week, I believe. Thank you guys, how are we doing tonight? This evening. This one's called When I Was Young. When I was young, there was fire in my lungs, and I just wanted someone to listen. Some ears to ignite with my pen in my tongue. Oh, I knew it was all just a wish, but that don't mean it couldn't exist. In just 17, yeah, I gave up my guns to play this guitar in the trenches. And I sang in the face of a man-eating sun. That Florida heat is a bitch. But I wouldn't trade nothing for it When I was young When I was young I got myself broken, beat down, busted up Left too many words on the tip of my tongue But oh, I was singing at the top of my lungs Every night I Spinning wheels turning, I fell into love, swallowed up in a sea of forgiveness. But grace in my heart and doubt in my blood, oh my God, oh my God, I forget. And you keep on paying for these secondhand sins. When I was young, when I was young, I was hiding. Giving my best but still falling behind But I was reborn in the dust and the pines Oh my When I was young Out of my window, tell me it's not 11 yet. But it's getting close, so and now I just don't know what to do. So then I said, Matt, you just gotta get back to those nights where you sat on the causeway. All you had were six strings and a heart that beat And you knew that it had to mean something Yeah, you knew that it had to mean something Oh, I just knew it was better than nothing When I was young When I was young We played rock and roll music on broken guitars Spent the whole night laying out Stars. She told me she loved me with her hand on her heart Now I'm turning these pages and holding on tight Living this life like I'm never gonna die Living this life like I'm never gonna die Living this life like I'm never gonna die Die, die When I was young
So there you go. That was the last uh, Wednesday concert uh, in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, concert season is over. It's hard to believe. Almost. I know. So, yeah. We have so many good there. venues for that. I mean, we're lucky. Yeah, yeah there's no shortage of uh, musical performances no. in Lake Orion. And uh, one last bash, L.O. Palooza. And then uh, it's time for pumpkin spice and uh, <laughs> apple cider and. Uh, I can get with the stuff. apple cider. I'm not a pumpkin spice person myself. <laughs> I tried some pumpkin spice Oreos. They were pretty good. <laughs> well, okay, so I do like pumpkin spice as a general rule, but like I'm not a. I'm not gonna have a latte in my hand. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know what else I uh, I get excited when I see in stores is uh, Count Chocula and Frankenberry. Yes. This is the time of the year when yes. you see them at local stores and uh, Booberry. I like picking that stuff up. And I guess Fruit Brute is making a return. That's not always uh, part of the uh, the group. Do you, do you remember Fruit Brute? No. So you had Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry. Right. Fruit Brute was a werewolf. No. Um, and then there was, I think there might have been a mummy one, too. Uh, but, yeah, Fruit Brood is coming back to stores this fall. So I never heard of that one. <laughs> Did, I, honestly, I can't even imagine it. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, I get excited when I see that back in the stores. I'm, I'm fired up for fall. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, that's when I start watching spooky movies and doing all that fun stuff. So Yeah, that's yeah. what we're getting ready to do, my... Um, my kids have been into the the movie The Black Phone lately. Mm -hmm. They'd seen it twice in the theaters, and then they they purchased it like the minute it came out on Amazon, whatever. So we w tried to watch it last night. Mm -hmm. um, not as spooky as I think it <laughs> could be, but you know what's making a return to theaters? I'm kind of excited about this. There was a movie that came out about a decade ago called Trick or Treat, mm -hmm. and it never got a major theatrical release. I remember. Um, emailing the director, <laughs> like, why can't I see your movie? And he responded and he said, your guess is as good as mine. He, he didn't know why it never got a theatrical release. It was released on DVD. Critics raved. I bought it sight unseen on DVD. It's one of my all-time favorite movies to watch this time of the year. And it's finally going to get a theatrical release this fall. Uh, so if you haven't seen Trick or Treat, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, a little, little gory. Not really gory, but kind of gross. Um, but it's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a fun movie to watch this time of the year. I like that kind of stuff. I love yeah. spooky season. Yeah, definitely. And scary movies. So, um... Scouting. Were you a scout? I was a Girl Scout. I was. Um, brownie, Girl Scout, and then my girls also were too. So, and then, uh, you know, but if we're talking about Boy Scouts, I have one in, in the house right now. Oh, I'm do you? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He's in a, a different troop, but yeah. he's, he's all about it. I did, uh, I did Cub Scouts, Weeblos, and then I kind of mm. got out of it. My brother continued on to Boy Scouts. Um, but we we have a group of scouts that come here in the studio. Uh, sometime last year, they started a, a new show called Scouting on Air, right. and it is amazing. They they put so much effort into it, and they do such a great job. And they go out and they cover events out in the community and do interviews here in the studio. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, a, a month or so ago, they set up a Zoom interview with an Eagle Scout in Poland, I believe right. it was, who brought in some uh, Ukrainian refugees, yep. uh, and they were able to have a conversation uh, over Zoom to talk about the, the crisis that's happening uh, in that part of the world. Wow. And it was really remarkable. And one of their scouts, his, his name is Ivan, uh, he was doing the interview, and then he asked if he can talk to the Ukrainian family. So. They can't, sort of came on the camera, and Ivan broke into his, his Russian and started conversing with him in oh, Russian, wow. and I was blown away, Yeah, just blown away. So Ivan is hosting this next segment that we have for you. Uh, he was out in, the, uh, out in nature somewhere and prepared a goulash that I guess is popular among scouts, something that you could make when you're out camping. Uh -huh. uh, and so here's Ivan with uh, a goulash rep uh, recipe to keep you warm this fall.
almost halfway done, but this blazing heat does not mean that hot food should be completely off of your menu. Today, I'm bringing you chicken andouille gumbo, the best invention of Louisiana's Creole kitchen, straight from New Orleans. This gumbo is so fantastic, anybody who tries it will be thanking you for weeks and weeks on end about the fantastic cuisine they've tried. But enough about praising said gumbo, let's see the ingredients that go into it. First up, we're gonna have a pound or a pound and a half of chicken, followed by a pound to a pound and a half of hot sausage. This is gonna be the meat base for our gumbo, and that's where you get your highly important proteins. After that, we're gonna have some crushed tomatoes, two peppers, two sticks of celery, and an onion. This will make up the vegetable base for our gumbo, and will provide us with that much needed other nutrients. After that, we have some oil and flour to make the all important gumbo root. And lastly, we'll have some cornstarch to thicken up our gumbo from a soup to a more gravy-esque consistency. And lastly, we have some more herbs and spices which we'll add on as we go through our cooking process. Now the first step to making gumbo is also the longest step, but not because of difficulty, but sheer time. We're gonna be simmering this chicken for about an hour to get it nice, soft, and tender to be ready to be added to our main dish, like so. And now we set it and forget it for the next 60 minutes. Moving on to cooking our next ingredients. Now while our chicken is simmering, we're gonna move on to the next part of gumbo, and possibly the most important one, making the roux. What the roux is, is baking some oil to a nice hot temperature, as you can see now it's steaming, and we're gonna cook some flour. We're gonna bring it up to a nice brownish consistency, and we're gonna bake all the air and the water out of said flour to reach a nice nutmeg flavor, which we'll use to enhance our gumbo taste. Now, it's very important to time the roux correctly because the bubbles that you saw is actually the water and the air evaporating from our flour. It's very important not to miss the point where the bubbles go away because that's when the most rapid part of the browning process happens. That's when the nutmeg comes out. But if you let it go too far, it's gonna turn black and you're gonna get a whole lot of burnt flavoring, which is not what we want to do here. It's supposed to reach a rich dark brown coloring, but just before it actually burns. And so, it's very important to watch your roux as you cook it. Perfect. Now I just added the tomatoes and the sausage to our sauteed vegetables. This is gonna allow the sausage and the tomato paste to interact together and sap all the juices from the sauteed veggies and incorporate it into the paste and then work together with the hot sausage to bring out the spiciness in our gumbo. Now we let it cook for 10 minutes and then we simmer it for the next 40 until the chicken gets done. When the chicken gets done, we're gonna bring it out, mix it in cook it for another five minutes, and then we'll be done, and the gumbo will be ready to serve. And now for the spices. We're gonna add them after we added our sausage and tomato paste to the rest of the roux. And what it involves is about a teaspoon of each of the spices that's seen before. We're gonna need a teaspoon of cayenne, a little bit of dill, a teaspoon of sage, white pepper, oregano, black pepper, and two bay leaves, as any soup requires. And then we're also gonna need two teaspoons of salt. These flavors are gonna to work together to bring out a nice, rich, yet spicy flavoring to add on to the sausage and the tomatoes and the roux that's in our gumbo to make for a delicious eating experience.
Here's what the end product should look like after simmering for 30 minutes. Bon appetit! Well, that looked tasty. It sure did. I'm impressed with his skills. I mean, not, you know, not the cooking skills, but that takes a lot of guts to get on a camera and do it a, a cooking segment. Good, good yeah, job. He that does awesome. a great job. Yeah. yeah. Um, so earlier in the uh, broadcast, we mentioned that on Friday, uh, the Lake Orion Dragons traveled to Oxford for their third game of the season. They opened the season against Utica Eisenhower with a loss. Uh, returned home to host Oak Park Knights and won impressively. Uh, they looked really great. So this past Friday they traveled to Oxford. Now I don't know if a lot of people are aware that there's a rivalry. It's called the Double O Trophy uh -huh. because they're cross town rivals. And so that's what was at stake in this game. Look at and that. Uh, they lost it to Oxford last year, so they were hoping to regain it this year. Sure. Uh, Oxford received the kickoff and they used up almost the entire first quarter uh, on their first drive. Really? I think uh, they eventually settled for a field goal, uh, but they took up almost the entire first quarter. Uh, wow. The Dragons answered uh, with a Roberson, or no, that's Hill, that's quarterback T.R. Hill uh, <laughs> with a quarterback sneak. He's been fantastic. He's a sophomore. So that touchdown gave Lake Orion the lead 7-3. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, then Lake Orion had a three and out. They punted to Oxford, and Oxford answered with this long <laughs> touchdown uh, from uh, Eli Tabert, I believe is his name. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he went at least 45 yards on that touchdown, and uh, Oxford regained the lead. It was 10-7 at this point, and that seemed to kind of light a fire under Lake Orion. Yeah. Uh, they came back and scored the next several touchdowns. Oh, um, this was uh, Billy Roberson here, uh, put them up 14-10 uh, with that touchdown. And then uh, he had another one uh, right after that, another 15-yard touchdown uh, to make the lead 21 nothing. Here it is right here. Look at uh, he just, he's really oh, talented. Look at him. And he took some hits going into the end zone there too. And then, again, Hill, quarterback T.R. Hill, mm -hmm. uh, he added the final touchdown of the game. Uh, and, again, talk about uh, easy-looking touchdown. He runs right and oh, look at him go. he... Oh, oh, he he did get a little face mask there. <laughs> they threw a flag, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they discussed it, and they picked up the flag, but uh, I guess they figured no harm, no foul. But that was the final touchdown of the game. Uh, when the double zeros hit the clock, uh, Lake Orion had reclaimed the double O trophy. They celebrated in the end zone. Coach Bell came over and sent them oh. over to the fans to celebrate the fans. There's Sammy Terramina. That trophy means the world to him. I'm sure he'll be bringing it into the studio next year. And there's the team posing with the double O trophy. So the double O trophy returns to Lake Orion at least for another year. Yeah. Um, it was fun watching the, the fans get into it. You know, obviously there's that 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 rivalry going back and forth, but everyone was really respectful. And I think everyone had a lot of fun, and uh, they did some really creative things. At one at one point, the Lake Orion fans all brought out their phone lights, and they hit, lit up the whole student section on the visitors' side of the oh, field. Yeah. Um, and then they had uh, baby powder or something. They were creating <laughs> these clouds of baby powder that the smell hung heavy in the oh, air. Um, but it looked like everybody had a lot of fun, and uh, Lake Orion is looking really really solid they're yeah. now two and one and they're hosting adams this friday on tv mm. will be there with our crew and team to record the adams game this friday uh, that should be a really good one that's been i guess they had a long standing rivalry with adams and then i think they changed divisions or something and didn't play adams for a number of years but now they're going to be playing uh, adams again so i vaguely yeah. remember something about that yeah because um that last year that was their first time playing them maybe it was i think so yeah for first time in yeah. a number of years so so yeah so uh the dragons uh two wins in a row uh hosting adams this friday let's hope they can keep it going yeah. uh it's nice to have chris bell back as head coach it was uh 
Uh, he turned over coaching duties uh, to th in 2016, I want to say, right. um, to John Blackstock. Uh, John Blackstock stepped down, Chris Bell stepped back in, yeah. and the team seems to be doing really well. So Good for them. Good job, buddies. Uh, lots of stuff going on this upcoming weekend. We already talked mm -hmm. about L.O. Palooza. That's going to be all day at uh, Wildwood. Uh, that morning, uh, this upcoming Saturday morning, uh, Golling Buick GMC is having their last big car cruise of the season. Mm -hmm. They call it the Golling Super Cruise. Uh, so I'll be there that morning shooting video at their cruise. So if you got one more car show in you, uh, you want to <laughs> end the, the car show season, go to Golling Buick GMC. Their lot on M24 this Saturday morning uh, for the last big car cruise of the season. Yeah. Um, on Sunday, there's a couple of events going on. There's uh, the Stars and Stripes Bash. Have yes. you heard about this? I have. What do you know about the Stars and Stripes so Bash? They were talking about this at the 9-11 Memorial. So there will be, you know, family activities. Um, they're going to be reading the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, not in its entirety, like all at one time, but throughout the day, they're going to be reading it. Um, there will be historical reenactments, people in costumes. I have actually seen some of these people before, you know, dressed as, you know, George Washington. And it's it's pretty convincing. I mean, the, the costumes are amazing. Um, but that's at, uh, yeah, Wildwood on Sunday. And then yeah. um, I don't know the times, but it should be interesting. It's um, yeah. a free event, I believe. And, yeah, I, I want to say it starts at noon, yeah. I believe. Family friendly, though. Um, yeah. So something for everyone. And also Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, is uh, the, the Lake Orion United Methodist Church is going to be celebrating 150 wow. years. Uh, so they're going to do a little march. They have a miniature replica of the church that they've mm -hmm. brought out for parades and things like that. Uh, they're going to go to where the church originally stood, where I think AutoZone is now, and they're going to do a little walk from that location to their current location, yeah. uh, and they're going to celebrate 150 years in Lake Orion. That's, that's incredible. That's pretty wild. And then this Saturday night uh, is going to be a fun event. We were talking about spooky season. Mm. Uh, the Zombie Walk returns this Saturday evening. Uh, everyone gathers at Ed's Broadway <laughs> Gifts in downtown Lake Orion. Uh, they'll do face painting, and uh, you can get what you need to zombify yourself uh, <laughs> for the walk. And <laughs> that, was, He's having a good time. that was Lloyd Cole yep. right there. Uh, speaking of Lloyd Cole, this all started as a birthday birthday celebration for Lloyd and it turned into a fundraiser and they have a poker run and all sorts of stuff and the money is uh, raised toward uh, the parade, yes. uh, lighted Christmas parade. Uh, so those taking part, it's a little bit of a pub crawl mm. uh, or you could say a stagger uh, pub crawl uh, zombie walk toward uh, several different businesses and restaurants in Lake Orion and uh, it's a lot of fun it's 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 great to see everyone has so much fun Is that molly? <laughs> yeah that molly takes oh, part and uh it's funny. and there's always kind of a neat photo op <laughs> there's a neat photo op in the alley uh right yes. there where uh, we gather everybody up and uh they go on the hunt for brains uh, in the alley in downtown lake look Warren. at him he's so funny yeah Boy. and so it's a really fun event i remember i i stumbled onto it a number of years ago yeah uh, like I, I literally i had the camera in the trunk of my car i was driving through downtown lake Orion. i saw people gathering in front of ed's broadway gifts i got out i said what's going on and they said we're doing our zombie walk and i was like well, I'm going to get my camera, and I yes. shot video and did interviews, and they, I've been coming back every wow. year to see it, and uh, it's just an absolute blast. Yeah. It's, uh, it's cool. So for me, it's the official start of the Halloween season when you see all these zombies, zombies wandering around <laughs> downtown Lake Orion. It's, it's really wow. something to see, and I'm sure people driving through downtown Lake Orion are like, what <laughs> the heck is yeah, going on? Yeah, if they on? don't know anything about it, can you imagine the surprise? <laughs> we'll just go downtown Lake Orion for a nice little quiet <laughs> evening for dinner and and drinks and then you know get accosted by zombies in the street the windows and <laughs> oh stuff. that would be great <laughs> yeah yeah so that's a lot of fun so uh, i i forget what time the kickoff is i 
I want to say six or something like that, but um, it's on Facebook, so uh, double check the time if you want to take part. Um, but yeah, let's get those numbers up for the zombie walk. It's a lot of fun and it's for a good cause to help fund the lighted Christmas parade in uh, December. The um, biggest, so. the biggest lighted, what would Bill Cocanos call it? The biggest lighted <laughs> Christmas parade on the planet. That's right. <laughs> It's pretty impressive. It is impressive. And I, I remember I remember when uh, Lake Orion transitioned from the daytime Christmas parade mm. to the nighttime Christmas parade. Uh, I have video of the last daytime uh, Christmas parade, and it wasn't well attended. Yeah. And so organizers were like, what can we do to get attendance up? Sure. So they said, well, let's try a nighttime lighted parade and get people to light up their floats with Christmas lights and stuff. Yeah. So the very next year they did it, and people came from all around yeah. to see that first year of the lighted the christmas lighted. parade and it was huge and uh it's great and they've been doing it ever since and that was uh that was about 25 years ago it's hard to believe it was that long ago really? but yeah wow. yeah hmm. so and another event you might want to put on your calendar i was talking to molly about it at the oktoberfest uh their halloween spectacular returns this year it's the wednesday before Halloween, I believe. So I think it's the 19th or the 20th or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, but yeah, that's a, a, a lot of fun where kids go trick or treating in Children's Park. In children's Park they yeah. have vendors and stations and stuff set up. Uh, like they we'll used go, to go throughout the whole village, but yeah. now they sort of contain it in the park and the parking lot uh, over by the Arts Center. Uh, so get that on your calendar if you have a little one and you're looking for some fun Halloween events to do in October. That's that's a good one. Yeah. That's a lot of fun. And I believe Canterbury Village has some stuff going on. Yeah, they always on do and, some uh, sort of, wasn't yeah. there like a ghost walk or something? But yeah. I know they always do like the, the haunted walkthrough stuff. My kids did that a couple, yeah. a couple times last year. I'm looking forward Pretty to scary. it. I know. And I've been seeing some promotional stuff uh, over at Greenfield Village. They have Halloween weekends. And if you've never done Halloween mm. weekends at Greenfield Village, you're missing out. It's it's a blast. Uh, have you ever done it? No. Is, is it more fun or is it also educational it's, too? It's fun, but they use those historic structures. They like put ghosts in oh. their historic structures and they use spooky lighting and stuff Ooh, like that. But like one of the houses, they'll have like this wailing bride who paces on the oh, upper floor yeah. with like fog and lighting and she wails and uh it's it's really cool it's a lot of fun so Love it. lots to do uh this october i'm really looking forward to it and uh we'll be back in a couple of weeks with another live episode of orion live thanks for joining me again thanks for asking me again all right and <laughs> we'll see you next time we'll see you